so it's been a little while since I've uploaded on here, but don't you worry your little noggin, I have not forgotten about you. In fact, I've actually been working on a little something. And unfortunately, that little something that I'm working on required me to sacrifice and let go of another little something. Allow me to explain. One of my first cars ever was a 2006 Jeep TJ Rubicon, beautiful midnight blue. Um, I absolutely love that vehicle. I was the first owner. Uh, it was the car that I drove to and fro high school. And it was the car that, uh, you know, when it was time for me to pick up and leave New Hampshire and start my adult life on the West Coast, I brought it with me. I met tons of people with that vehicle. I've shared and made so many memories with that vehicle. It, it, like through my formative years, I was with that vehicle. And for eternity, I will always recognize that Jeep as one of the best vehicles I've ever owned. But that being said, I sold it. Now listen, okay, when I lived in New England, Southern New Hampshire to be exact, there were a bunch of trails, a bunch of hills, a bunch of little mountains in very close proximity to wherever you found yourself. So you would never have to be on the road for that long until you got to the trail. And then when you were off road, you know, all bets are off. You're fine in the Jeep. And having that five and a half inch long arm kit, the super low gears, the 35 inch tires and everything that went along with that, the eight mile per <laughs> gallon. <laughs> in New England, it just wasn't troublesome at all. But fast forward to now, end of 2021, I live on the West Coast. All the trails, all the destinations, all the trips that I like to do, they're minimum a couple hundred miles away from me. I now have a beautiful woman in my life, which means it's another person that I'm bringing along with me, which means there's some more gear that we take on these trips, which means this new person that I cherish has to feel safe and comfortable in the vehicle. It's not just me blasting around, getting to some rock crawling trail and breaking stuff. No, I, I'm, I'm with someone. So essentially, I came to the realization that I needed something larger that could carry more gear and something that could feel more stable across longer distances, right? These aren't short rock crawling trails. These are now longer overlanding trips. So I made the very, very difficult decision to sell my Jeep and I picked up a Land Rover LR3 this is the V8 HSE, and uh, this is known for ev everywhere that isn't in North America, this was known as the Discovery 3. This car has a 4.4 liter V8, four wheel drive with four low, has three ride height controls, has five terrain settings, street, sand, rock, snow, and mud. It has this really cool yellow button that is hill descent control. So if you're at a very steep decline, uh, the brakes work a little bit differently and it helps you kind of granny yourself down. Has leather all on the interior. It feels so fancy schmancy. Front and rear heated seats, which is in insane. <laughs> and one of my favorite things, the rear seats lay totally flat. All right. And I fit laying down. Connie and I fit laying down perfectly. And I tested that before I bought it. Now the truth is I spent a relatively short period of time trying to find one of these LR3s and there was a plethora of them to choose from in Southern California. Um, but you know, I had a certain price range, some money that I was working with after selling the Jeep and uh, there were some specs that I definitely wanted. I knew I wanted the V8, I wanted the HSE, which is the um, fancy higher spec version. And uh, if I was going to get a Land Rover, I needed one in Tonga green, okay? So for some reason, all the LR3s here in California were silver, and I have no issue with silver cars. My STI is silver, love it. But again, Land Rover has to be this kind of forest green, and I found one. The second I got a listing notification, it happened to be like less than an hour away from me in Orange County. I drove over there, did the deal, Bada bing, bada boom, I now own a Land Rover. So I'm gonna show you some images of how it looked like when I bought it. Uh, again, Tonga Green, OEM 18 inch uh, bronze Land Rover wheels, which is really cool. That bronze with that kind of forest green, it looks great, uh, and 30 inch tires. Now after selling the Jeep and buying this Land Rover, I had some extra money laying around 
and I knew there would probably be some maintenance things I would have to take care of, and I definitely knew that there were some modifications that would have to be done. So, like always, can't leave anything alone, I immediately ordered some parts. And so begins my journey to build the ultimate overlanding vehicle. So far, as you've seen with some of the footage here, uh, I have a two and a half inch Johnson rod lift and 32 inch Wrangler Duratrac tires. Now, literally the second I turn this camera off, I'm going to four wheel parts. Uh, they have a warehouse not too far away from me here in SoCal uh, and they have my ARB bumper and uh, the winch that I bought. And I also have some Baja design um, amber lights, uh, the XLR, sports i believe that we're putting on the front so yeah those aren't on yet though but i'm probably gonna have them on this week or next week i'm very very excited now we did our first little shakedown last weekend at joshua tree we did geology tour road which is not super duper extreme in any way but very sandy uh some rocks i was in the sand terrain setting i did lift it into a uh, uh, off-road height mode um, which gives you two inches on top of the two and a half inch list lift I now have with the Johnson rods. And within Joshua Tree National Park, that trail is two hours to complete. So this was a really good test seeing how this, you know, Land Rover would do at highway speeds getting to Joshua Tree, which is already like a two hour drive, almost a little bit over two hours from where I live. And then uh, doing the trail and coming back. And let me tell you, it exceeded my expectations even with the larger tires and again this has over two inches larger tires uh, than were stock on this vehicle the immediate torque was great coming from that v8 uh, the brakes were awesome whenever someone would you know jut into my lane which happens all the time here in california oh we have the best driver and everything felt super stable and incredibly comfortable on the highway at speed we were cruising i had one hand on the wheel like it's insane this is also one of the first automatics i've ever owned so i had a powerade i was drinking and connie would pass it to me to take a sip and, and i felt like i had to immediately like it's very foreign for me to have something in my hand while i'm driving because i'm always i feel the need to shift but having an automatic oh my god this is the future <laughs> Now off-road, uh, that air suspension just soaked up all the little whoops and bumps and there were some off-camber, some minute off-camber areas when I wanted to take a rock, you know, and, and, and see what would happen and take a cool photo. And it, it was just super simple for like, th this is a very easy trail, but this vehicle it was nothing. All in all, it was just a very different experience taking the Land Rover on the highway to the trail, completing the trail and coming back, then it would have been whenever we did it with the Jeep. The Jeep, it was just white knuckle driving anytime you'd go above 45. With that gearing, with that lift and those tires, I was it was just not fun. So I am absolutely sad to see the Jeep go, but the memories, you know, they're not gone. I, I still have the memories and in the future, I absolutely would like to build another Jeep, but it was the responsible thing to do. After taking the LR3 out and seeing what it can do, and seeing how much Connie loved it, Connie is enamored by this vehicle. It's just so much more comfortable and fun for her to be in the vehicle when we do these trips, which is important, right? I mean, if, if she's not going to have as much fun doing these trips, then it, there's no point in doing them. So now seeing how excited and how comfortable and safe she felt, it just made it all worth it. There, there, there was zero buyer's remorse at that point. My Rubicon was an incredibly competent rock crawler. It was extreme. It could conquer anything. And I felt 100%, you know, I trusted it 100, 1000%. But my life is different now. I like doing longer trips. I like overlanding. It's not short, extreme trails. It's longer, less extreme trails, but you're almost living out of the vehicle for periods of time. You're exploring, camping, taking photos, now filming stuff. And I'm just very excited for the build that I'm gonna do. Who doesn't love buying car parts? Uh, but also the memories I'm gonna make with this vehicle. This Land Rover is integral to that. So I'm very happy to have another utility vehicle, something I can trust, something I can have fun with and something that's going to get us there comfortably. Now again, stay tuned for the ARB bumper, uh, the Baja design lights and the winch going in. And then if everything goes well, 
uh, at the end of this month as a little Hanukkah present to myself. I'm going to be picking up a Baja Rack Roof Rack and a uh, ARB Safari Snorkel because if you're an overlander, you got to have a snorkel and a roof rack. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this little reveal. Uh, again, it's... um. It was time to make a big boy decision, letting go of something I really love to get something else. And I think I made the right decision, but let me know in the comment section, what do you think? And uh, yeah, guys, get out there, have fun, drive. I'm T3 and it's time to drive.